Hi everyone, this is a quick video on my mobile phone. I'm in the Milmeran area and I just want to share an infestation, what it looks like in response to a fire cycle. You know, we've got senescent trees, some that are partially or moving towards senescent and a lot of senescent trees and a lot of, a lot of trees that have died from a hot fire. But the response to that fire and disturbance is a strong infestation. So it just goes to show that an infestation can come back through as part of a cycle through the life of a forest. It's not necessarily all, it is the beginning all of the time. But part of a recovery or the disaster taxa, that's the nature of an infestation is to come back and fill in and cre create an energy flow and support life in the event of a severe disturbance and uh, something you know verging on the cat catastrophic which has happened here so here's the infestation of the acacia the wattle burnt stumps it's been a hot fire but <coughs> here they are this is your infestation this is the density we're after this is the restoration and the energy flow going back in. I think this is a really good example of what I mean by infestation. It's shading the ground, cooling it down. You know, there's a lot of death here, a lot of dead plants. Some trees survived, <clears throat> but the fire to some extent did do a reset. And here they come. Now, if this is not managed and organised in some way, this wattle is all going to grow out and become senescent. And she's going to catch fire again. And up it'll go, and it'll be as hot as hell. And this will repeat, rinse, wash and repeat. And this is, happens a lot in the Australian landscape. It's a, it's, it's a really tricky, sticky situation, you know, because this was traditionally managed by fire, but they were cool burns. And often a lot of this country, some people are doing some successful cool burns. Burns are something we'll talk about in the future. But yeah, I just thought I'd show you another example of an infestation, you know. Good photosynthesis, good energy flow. It's recovering, healing. But you have to get it at the right time before it goes senescent. And then, well, in circumstances like this, she catches fire. But in other circumstances, it just goes senescent and oxidizes and just becomes entropic. So here's one of these acacia infestations that's further advanced. Look at the biomass. It's all flowering now. Again, it's recovering from a fire. But have a look at all of the biomass. But again, if this all goes senescent, where it's not, it's actually not far away. It's, it's not yet, but it will be soon. But just imagine how hard that's going to burn and how hot that's going to burn. But again, we're looking at infestation, this phenomena that we want to chase to begin our systems in a really good way. And, you know, this is the biomass we get. You know, we don't need the grasses when we get these types of infestations. We just prune them. Have a go. This is the phenomena we look for. We want to emulate. We want to recreate. This is what nature does. I can't even get in there. <laughs> Gee. Oh, um, it's almost impenetrable. But it's given us the results that we want in the early days, which is a really good littered understory. This is good soil. This is a beautiful cycle of carbon, a beautiful litter. Really, really nice. Look at that fungus and life there. This is hard country. This is really tough country here. And this stuff is really, really fixing it up nicely. Massive infestation. 
very 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 heavy very thick this is the density we want you know nature shows us and this is this is clear instructions from her right here And that's why the acacia species are so good for infestation in cooler climates and climates where we get frosts, very dry climates, harsh climates, very severe conditions. These acacias are fantastic. That's really something to work with what we're looking here with out here and if we if this was our land we would organize that into lines and we would get some good results. It looks like this edge here's been poisoned. But again, it's through and across the other side of the road. You can tell by the dead treetops that there's been a big fire here. I'm going to add to this video, I'm going to speak to the second part of the video where we're looking at that more advanced infestation. And <clears throat> something to point out here is that that is in the period and almost passing through the period of consolidation. So what that means is that is the perfect time for disturbance in that infestation. And just to add that what we just witnessed in that video is what we really want to see in the first phase of successional accumulation. If we want to start systems without compost, without mulch, if we can't afford to bring in the mulch, use the labour, purchase the mulch, organise it and spread it around and again get that compost if we can get in there a year ahead of course these are long-term systems that we're planning if we can plan this way in strategy especially if we're working in a larger scale or a low budget we want this infestation in our systems in the first year if we can get it this is what we're aiming for it doesn't matter what climate you're in you want that type of plant density you want that infestation you want that invasive stuff going on you will not need mulch if you generate any mulch between the tree rows, uh, that's great. It's just more mulch, you know, but at the end of the day, it gives everything that it needs. You've seen in the video what happens to the forest floor and you can see how much mulch is ready to come down. And of course, I've done this a few times now, set for several cycles on my farm and it works. So I hope you can find some ways of uh, finding an infestation and successfully establishing and managing an infestation in your farm and uh, no matter where you are in your climate look for the plants that do that work and I'd be really excited to hear back from you to see what you found and what you've done don't forget the density that's it